using the cleaning station, our recommendation is for cleaning the reverse osmosis system. First of all, cleaning the reverse osmosis system must be shut off. You cannot run the RO system and run the cleaning system cleaning the RO at the same time. You stop the RO system and you get the valves on the RO system configured as we mentioned previously. Certain cleaning valves open, the normal operating valves closed, and then you set up the cleaning station for uh, first mixing, and then by adjusting these two valves, running the cleaning station to the RO system. For cleaning the RO, we recommend, in, in general, a five-step process. The first step, fill this tank with pure water, permeate water, and do a rinse on the RO membrane. What we would do with the first is you wouldn't have to do the mixing. So you can start off by just adjusting the flow on the flow meter to get the flow you want. And for, for cleaning the array one of the R row, 32 cubic meter per hour. Just the 32 cubic meter per hour and just rinse. Just run the permeate water through the RO membrane back into the tank. You do that for 15 to 30 minutes. Maybe 20, 30 minutes. It's, it's as much as you have time for. Basically, just rinse it out really well. After you've done that rinse step, then drain the tank, empty it out, refill the tank with permeate water again. Now, you will do your acid clean. After your tank is full, you add your acid chemical, you do the mixing, so that valve closed, this valve open, and you'll mix until your pH measures here between two and three. Do that mixing. After the mixing is complete, the pH is where you want. Then close this valve a little, open this valve, and recirculate the acid solution through the RO system for about one hour at pH 2 to 3. Monitor the flow, make sure for array 1, 32 tons per hour, for array 2, 24 tons per hour. Monitor your pressure here, make sure that you're between uh, 40 and 60 psi on this third gauge, and that your differential pressure is not too great. In my clock. Do that for one hour. After the one hour is up, you can do you can stop the acid step and rinse again. Sometimes it's valuable to let the acid solution sit in the membranes overnight. In very, very extreme cases, the membranes are very, very scaled. You can let it sit overnight. If they're not, if it's just a normal cleaning operation, one hour should be enough. After one hour, drain the cleaning solution out of the tank, open the drain valve, refill the tank again with permeate water, and then we're going to rinse again. Same situation. We, we don't have to mix. We're just going to open that valve, and we're going to run the water through into the RO, back to the tank, 32 tons per hour, array 1, 24 tons per hour, array 2, for about 15 to 30 minutes. After that rinse step is complete, drain yeah. the tank again, fill it back up with permeate water, and then you will add your high pH count. Close that down, open this valve, do your mixing of your high pH chemical, until your pH on this meter is between 11, about 11, 10, 12, roughly 11. Right, your mixing is good, pH is 10, 11. circulate from the tank into the RO back into the tank for about one hour. Again, if it's a very extreme case of fouling, you can leave the cleaning solution in the membranes overnight. If it's not so extreme, it's just a regular thing, one hour should be enough. After one hour, stop the cleaning system, drain the tank, get all the cleaning solution out, close the drain valve, refill back up again with permeate water. And then you do one more rinse. It's important to rinse all the cleaning chemicals out before you start the RO system again. Because first, with all the cleaning chemicals in the system, the, the RO will not perform at its best performance. So fill this tank back up with RO permeate water, close this valve off, open that valve, and rinse the flow to about 32 tons per hour for array one, 24 for array two. 
circulate through the system and make sure you get a really good rinse. You might want to do this about 30 minutes. Make sure all that water is cleaned out. Sometimes we even do two rinses. We see the water coming back from the cleaning system into the tank. It's often good to take a look. Look at the flow meter and see what it looks like. Look in the tank coming back and see what it looks like. If the water looks really nasty and dirty, there's a lot of stuff coming back still, you might want to consider draining the tank again, refilling it, and rinsing some more with fresh water. Don't just keep recirculating this nasty water back into the membrane. When you get a really good rinse, the water coming back from the membranes is looking pretty good. It's pretty clean, it's looking about the same as you put in. You know you've rinsed it out pretty well. You check your pH. Your pH should be back down around the pH of what the permeate water was. If you first are doing this rinsing, if you just completed the acid, the pH will still be low. If you just completed the acid, the high pH, then the pH will still be high. But as you do the rinse and you bring that back in, the pH will drop from high or it'll raise up and you get closer and closer to the neutral pH. So when you run that rinse cycle, cleaning water coming back is looking good, your pH is getting about normal, you're okay. And then drain your tank out, and you basically clean it. You've completed your cleaning cycle. Then you can turn your cleaning system off for good, and you can put your valves back in their normal position, normal operating position. Close the cleaning valves, open the normal operating valve, and run your RO system. After you've done the cleaning and you run the RO, it's probably a good idea to dump your permeate to drain and not not feed it directly into EDI right away. Wait. So you run the RO a little bit and you see that the performance is what you want. Feed TDS, or the, excuse me, permeate TDS is less than 10 microsiemens and the quality is good. Then you can put that into your RO permeate tank and feed it to the